downstairs. And the rest of you, open your Bible there, the Word of God in Acts chapter 17. Thank you for the special music that blessed my heart, blessed our hearts. Thank you so much, choir. What a blessing you were to us this morning. I want to say thank you publicly. Thank you for the wonderful blessing. Solos, thank you so much. God bless every one of you. I appreciate you so much. You are a blessing to me. I want to be a blessing to you. In the book of Acts of the Apostles in chapter 17, I want you to look at our text verse here. For as I passed by and behold your devotions, I found an altar, I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. The title of the sermon this morning is I declare unto you the unknown God. Thank you so much, Brother Ron. You're helping these young guys, and I appreciate you, these young men. You're helping them. Thank you so much. And uh, with the titles and all that, get that title, write it down, and check on them, Leron. Check on them for me, because sometimes, young guys, you get the titles messed up. Last week, we're not most miserable. You put on the uh, message, we're most miserable. So if you can change that title, I appreciate it. It's on YouTube. Um, it's where we are not. <laughs> we are not most miserable. <laughs> And so, Brother Ron, I'm sure after they listen to the sermon, they'll find out what I'm talking about, that we're not most miserable. And thank God we're not most miserable because of the resurrection. Amen? We're not miserable, the most miserable. <laughs> well, God bless you guys. I love you. But I declare unto you, write that title down, if you will. Write it down. And thank you, Brother Ron. You back up and um, back them up and check on them for me. And um, I declare unto you. I, I declare unto you the unknown God. I declare unto you. Look at what the Bible says here. For as I pass by and behold your devotion, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. They're praying to the unknown God. Can you imagine that? Praying to a God that you don't know. Can you imagine these people building an altar? I found an altar. I thank God for the altar. The altar is a place of worship. The altar is a place for sacrifice. The altar is a place to meet God, to give, um, to come to him, to worship. And I thank God we give an altar call. And I thank God we pray at this altar. I thank God some of you have family altar. And you pray to God in your home. But what a, what a, what a, what a heartbreak, what a sad thing that people praying to a God they don't know. And they are praying. We know that you're there. We see the sun. We see the moon. We see the stars. But we don't know you. We don't know you. And I'll break our hearts to think about, think about how many churches are gathered and how many people gather together and they're coming there for religious activity, but they don't know him. They, don't, they know he's there. They know that somehow we got here. It ought to break our heart. And my friend, the Bible says that heavens declare the glory of God. The, heaven, uh, the heavens declare and shows when we see the stars and we see the sun, we see the moon, we, we see the heavens. You and I know there's a God. I'm so glad that we know him. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful to know God, friends. It's wonderful to know God. And the Bible says right here, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him, 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 declare I unto you. I declare unto you, unknown God, Paul says. I love what it says here in verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of, of, of Mars, of Mars Hill. He stood. If we're going to have to, if we're going to declare to the world this unknown God, friend, we're going to have to take a stand. And Paul stood, stood strong, stood tall, stood boldly, declared.
declaring unto the unknown God. Thank God for you that stand. Stand in school and declare unto them this unknown God they don't know. Stand in your college. Stand in your job. Stand in your neighborhood. Stand in his doors. Pass out tracts. Get the gospel out. People need to know God in this time of plague and a time of crisis. If there's ever a time we need God's people to stand is this morning. We got to stand and declare unto them. They're looking to know God. Amen. Thank you. Stood and said, ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. We got to stand and declare our God, how great he is, how wonderful he is. Why? Because we're living in a superstitious world. In this time of plague, they're very superstitious. They don't know why is this thing happening? Why are people getting sick? Why are people dying? When this happens, some are superstitious. They're superstitious black cats, um, uh, witchcraft. They're superstitious. Uh, they, they do this. They do that. They're superstitious. They don't want to uh, um, no, no, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Oh, don't go on the elevator Friday the 13th. They're scared. They're scared to go outside. They're very superstitious. Very superstitious. This world is confused. They're doing all kinds of things. They're going to witchcraft. My friend, that's sad. Some of them are looking to those that can tell their future. You know, it's so sad, isn't it? And we got to help them. And they're very superstitious today. But we got to show them and declare them to the, the real God, the true God. And Paul noticed they're superstitious and, and um, so sad what different countries do about going to heaven, trying to go to heaven, and what they're trying to do to be saved, and all these different activities uh, that's going on. But we need to declare them the true God, the true God. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, look at that, for as I passed by and beheld your devotions, do you pass by? You don't want to declare the true God, Jesus Christ, the true Christ, the true Messiah, the true God. Do you, do you, do you notice their devotions? Does it break our hearts? They're very devoted, friends. There's a lot of religious groups that are very, very devoted. Didn't you see even last week on Sunday how many, how many people are so devoted and, and so many religious activity going on and some of them are dedicated and it ought to break our hearts to see all this false religion, what they're doing. You see, we got to declare unto them the truth. He seen their devotion. He looked at it. And I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, verse 23. Underline this, whom therefore ye what? Ignorantly what? You're ignorantly worship. Ignorance. Ignorance is sad. How many people, and today there's a lot of people online, friend, because of the play going on, and many of them don't even go to church, and they're watching on their TV, they're watching on their laptop, they're watching on their phone. It ought to break our heart. They're ignorantly worshiping uh, in a way, they're not understanding the true God. And we got to declare, we got to declare it to them that, that Jesus Christ is the Savior, that Jesus Christ is this God. We got to explain to them, Philippians chapter 2, that God became a servant, walked on this earth, and died on the cross. We got to explain to them, Colossians chapter 1, that Jesus Christ created it all. We got to explain to them in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And, and John 1 14, and He became flesh. We got to explain to them that Jesus, this is the Lamb of God. Just is the, He is the Savior. This is God. We got to explain and declare unto him that Christ was more than just a man, that he was God. God in the flesh. We got to explain to him, uh, the, the, the world that God's love, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We got to explain to him, Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other, but it's in Jesus Christ. We got to explain to him who God is. We got to explain to him, Jesus, declare, declare, 
that he is the door, the only true door. Declare that he is the life, the everlasting water, that he is the shepherd, that he is the lamb, that he is the prophet, he is the priest, he is the king. Break it down to him. He healed the dead. He healed the sick. He healed the blind. You got to break it down to him. Declare unto the world. Let them see Jesus in the way you walk, in the way you talk. Jesus, and bring Jesus, bring Jesus to people. To soul winning. Amen. Knocking on doors. Do we still knock on doors during the plague? Yes. Yes. The mailman does his job. Pizza man is delivering. Hello? Wendy's is delivering. And we must deliver God's word. Thank God for you that work in the supermarkets. We can, we, can, we can have some food. People need the bread of life. People need God. People need to know God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Right? FedEx is going on. UPS is going on. God's people got to share God's word during this time. We must declare to the world the death, burial, and resurrection. Doctors have died, friend, during this plague. Nurses have died, friend. Police officers are dead. Did you hear me? They sacrificed their lives. We got people right now in the ocean that are protecting us. The military. Air forces protecting us in the sky. They're giving their lives. And we can't hide in our closets. We got to declare. Look at Acts chapter um, um, 17. Paul says to the unknown God whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him him declare, him declare, him declare I unto you. I declare unto you this truth. I care about you. You ignorantly worship me. You need to know you. You need to know how to go to heaven the right way. You need to know that there's a hell. You need to know there's a heaven. You need to know there's a Holy Spirit. You need to know there's going to be a rapture. You need to know that there's going to be a judgment. You need to know God. You need to know about his mercy. You need to know about his grace. You need to know about his love. You need to know about his compassion. You need to know him. God that made the world, verse 24, God that made the world and what? And all things therein. He made it all seeing that he is Lord of where? Heaven and what? Earth. Break it down to him. Dwell not in temples made with what? Hands. Would you break, would you please pay attention? I, I want you to get this. I want to help you. Would you declare, would you declare, would you declare unto him? Would you declare unto him? He lives in the temple of the body of the believer in 1 Corinthians 6, break it down to him. Break it, break it down to him that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that he lives in the body of the believer. Would you explain to them the Holy Spirit? Would you explain to them that God in heaven meets with us when we come to service in Matthew 18 and 20, when two or three are gathered together, he's right here in the midst. Would you explain to him, God, that he is real, that he is alive, that he is a creator, and we walk with him, we talk with him, that he is with us, that he answers prayer, that he made our ears, he can hear us, that he made our eyes, he can see us, that we are created in his image and his likeness, and he wants to be loved, just like we do. that he made all things for the atheists declare for the agnostics declare how real he is 
by the way, I want to say thank you that live such a Christian life. I can see God in you. One of the greatest compliments you can get is you're a Christian. You are a Christian. I see it in the way you look. I see it in the way you act. I see it in the way you conduct yourself. I see Jesus in you. That's one of the greatest compliments that you can get. I love it when they say, and I never told them I'm a preacher. The preacher's here. The church man is here. I, I didn't tell them I was a preacher. I love it. I love Mama! How do they know it? I, I just love the compliment. When I walk into a place, they say, you don't have to tell me. I know you're God's man. I know you're God's man. It's the greatest compliment I can get. It's the greatest compliment you can get. Is you're a Christian. You're a Christian girl. How do you know? How do you know you're a Christian boy? How do you know you're a Christian young man? Christ. Jesus in you. Declaring the way, in the way you dress, in the way you talk, in the way your manner is. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Show the world you're a Christian. Declare Christ. Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall what? Be saved. How are they going to call upon him whom they have not believed? How are they going to believe in him? They haven't heard. How are they going to hear without a preacher? You have to declare it. How do you expect them to get saved? You don't tell them. How are they going to call them? And how is it going to happen if we're not sent? But God has sent us, hasn't he? God has sent us, hasn't he? God has sent you. God has sent me to declare to the world. The death, burial, resurrection, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be what? Saved. I was 18 when somebody declared it to me. This unknown God. I was 18. Grew up in the Kingdom Hall, Jehovah's Witness family. Kingdom Hall. Grew up in the Kingdom Hall, Jehovah's Witness background. Went to the studies. We studied. Went to the memorials. But I didn't know him. I didn't know him, friend. We taught Jehovah. We taught Jehovah this, Jehovah that. I didn't know him. I did not know him, friend. Thank God, my precious wife, I met her. She invited me to church. I said, God be the praise. I went to the church for the first time in my life when I was 18 years old. Now, some of you have been blessed when you were a little child, a little junior. Okay, you were younger. But I was 18. I was 18. In the world. Lost. Yes, I used to talk to Jehovah. I used to run into the run into the bathroom and cry when my mom and dad would fight when they drink alcohol and I'd cry in the bathroom and shut the door beg Jehovah to help They're about to kill each other friend that was horrifying to me I love my mama I don't want to see her being I love my dad I didn't want to see him, him beat up either I don't want them to kill each other so what do you do as a child you run up to the bathroom and cry but I did it ignorantly I didn't know him. I didn't know him. And my wife invited me to church, and thank God the preacher gave an invitation. Thank God I came down the altar. Thank God he declared of me. Jesus died, was buried, rose from the dead. Jesus Christ shed his blood. Jesus Christ hung on the cross. Jesus Christ died, so I don't have to go to hell. Jesus Christ, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not by the kingdom hall. It's not by a religion. It's by Jesus Christ declaring unto me that I was a sinner, and I asked Jesus to save my soul. And he changed my walk. He changed my talk. I said, I'm not going to play the devil's music anymore. I don't want your money. I, I, I changed the way I looked. I changed the way I acted, and I got right with God Ask God to forgive me. I was ignorant. I thought because I cussed so much I couldn't be saved. My nasty mouth. I said, I can't be saved. How can I? No, my nasty mouth. Every cuss word of a, 
a four, I, I'm about to cuss, now I won't cuss. But thank God it's been 40 years now he's helped me. He's helped me not to cuss. Somebody say amen there. You see, I got to work at it. I got to work at it, right? And I'm sure I've cussed this after I got saved. But the Lord, let, he let me know that's wrong. And God's helped me with it. Okay? All right? It's like the preacher. He, he was, had a wicked life in his past, his sinful life. And he got mad at the devil. He cussed the, he cussed the devil all across the church. All across, and man, I'll tell you, he, he, he got, felt so far. He said, I resign. I, I, I resign. Get, get a better pastor. Well, home. They said they pleaded with him and begged with him, come on back. And they said, we know that you just got mad at the devil. And I believe the church, you know, encouraged him, and he came back. But, 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 but I'm trying to tell you, friend, look, thank God Jesus saves by his grace and mercy. Not because we stop cussing, but because we trust him, we believe in him, we, 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 we have faith in him, and he's merciful to us. Isn't that right? Ain't that right? Amen. You see, the Bible says here in verse 25, neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all what? Life and what? Breath and what? All things. Who's keeping us alive through this plague? Jesus. 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 That's what we need during this plague. We need God to give us life, to give us breath. Do you know that this plague, this COVID-19, this coronavirus, goes after the breath? It goes after the breathing. It attacks the lungs. Did you know that? God has got to give us this breath. God has got to give us this life. They found 17 bodies piled up in a nursing home type building, and they're in trouble in New Jersey, and every family that has a, a part of those bodies should be, they make it a morgue that they're not supposed to make, piling 17 bodies up, like they're nothing. That's life. That's somebody's life. That's somebody's loved ones that they had life. They, 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 now they're dead. Life is in God's hands. Death is in God's hands. I hope you know that. I hope you know that, friends. We need to worship him, to praise him, to adore him, to love him. It attacks the 80-year-old. It attacks the 70-year-old. Do you know that? I understand it happens to some teenagers and some children. I understand that. That's very rare. It can't happen. But many of them are old. In the last days, we got to pray that God will help them to praise the Lord, to thank the Lord, to pray to the Lord, to live for the Lord. I hope to God when you're 70 years old, 80 years old, you're clapping your hands, giving glory to God, and saying, God, you're the one that keeps me alive. Amen? There is a lady that God waited 80 years, pleaded with her for all those years. And some of those years, and thank God she got right with God, but then she started slipping. I don't know if it was in her 40s. I don't know if it was in her 50s, but it was a long time, friend. She would stand up and testify around here and sing. She got backslidden. She's singing the choir. She's singing the Lord. She was old. God was pleading with her in this church. I told you about him. It breaks my heart bringing it up to you. But I want to show you how God pleads with people. She knew about God. She would even declare about how good God is. She would declare to people. And she stopped. I'll never forget it. Before that car smashed her into the wall. 80 years old, I believe. I'll never forget that week. She said, Pastor, I know I'm supposed to be tithing. I know I'm supposed to be giving. I know I'm supposed to be serving God. It breaks my heart even talking to you about it. But I'm talking to you about it because I want you to know that life and death is in God's hands. And a car ran through the light on Broadway while she was shopping with God's money. 
And by the way, it's God's money. It's not our money. And he said a tithe is supposed to go to him. And he said offerings. And if we have whatever it is, 80% left over, we don't supposed to waste his money. We don't supposed to be wasteful. Well, anyway, make a long story short, while she was shopping, the car ran the light and squished her in the building. Well, God pleaded with her. Before that happened, I think everything burnt on fire in her apartment where her boyfriend or her husband, whoever it was, the man that she was living with, the matches caught on fire. And everything was burnt up in her home before she died. Friend, can I ask you, what does it take for people to get right with God? What they, what she once declared to him how good God is. She once led the choir. She once served. Him I declare unto you. Him I declare unto you. Friends, no matter what you go through, realize that life is in God's hands. Life is in God's hands. I'm thinking about a man that we were so close. We would go soul winning together. We would serve God together. Used to sing in our choir. Used to be faithful here. I don't wish this. I'm sorry I got to talk about these things. But I want you to know they declared at one time. And they stopped. And they got backslidden. Went to a liberal church. To make a long story short. He died, I believe, a premature death. Another one was a young man. Went to sleep. Didn't wake up. He was once declaring the word of God, got backslidden, got out of the church, went to a liberal church, went to a church where they're not soul winning, went to the church where not serving God, went like they should, went to a church not declaring. We are made here to glorify God, to represent God, not to glorify ourselves. I don't wish this on anybody. My wife, heartbroken, with tears in her eyes, no doubt, and it hurt. It hurt me to see her dwindle and death come upon her. And my wife would tell you, it breaks her heart. Once would declare the, how good God is, and once would soul win, once would sing in the choir, and, and got so backslidden where the devil came in the home, and it's so sad. I, I hate talking about this, but I say it to you to keep you going on. I want to keep, she would tell, if she was here alive today, she would tell you, don't do it. Don't mess up. God involved in immorality and adultery. Friend, God involved with a bad relationship. Thank God for your family, friend. Thank God for your family. Would you please? Don't let the devil mess you up. And she started living with someone that she should not live with and doing wrong. And death came upon her. Death and sickness came upon her. It hurts me to bring this up and talk about it. I don't like talking about it. But I want to keep you going. I want to keep God's blessings on you. I want you to keep declaring how good God is. I want you to keep spreading the word. I want you to thank God for his goodness. He's been good to you. And he gives you life. That's what the Apostle Paul saying. It's in him. It's in Christ. Look at here in um, Acts chapter 17. Look what he's saying here. He's declaring unto them. Declaring unto them about God. In verse 25. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath. He give life and breath. Who's giving you life? Who's giving you breath? God. Jesus. And all things, and he hath made of one blood and of all nations a men for to dwell on the all face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. You must declare unto them that God is control of all this, God knows about it, God appoints things, that this plague doesn't catch God by surprise, that God is control of all this plague, that he knows where we're at. He knows what's going on all around the earth. God is in control of it all. He's not asleep. He's not on vacation. He's watching it. Okay? He's keeping me alive. 
He's keeping you alive. He's a God that heals. He's a God that allows death. They predicted about two million deaths. Then it went down to a million. It went on to 80,000 deaths. Now it's down lower. Okay? Pray for these people. They're just trying to help you. But they're not God. Our president's not God. The scientist's not God. The doctors are not God. You can say right. You can say amen. <laughs> it's not really. You can say amen. All God's people said. Here, here you go. Nothing wrong with that. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. You're listening, though. You're listening attentively. But we got to explain to them. We got to declare to them. Those, those people, thank God for the presence, task force. Thank God for all this. But they're, 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 those, ain't, those ain't pastors. Those ain't pastors. It's the word of God that we got to have to really depend upon during this crisis. It's going to help us. The true living God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 27, that they should seek the Lord if what? If happily they might what? Feel after him and what? Find him. Though he be what? Not far from every one of us. We're going to have to declare Oh, he's way up there. Yes, he's way up there on the throne, but he's everywhere. Our God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows every mind. Our God is omnipresent. The omni means all-powerful. He's all-powerful, present everywhere. So, Satan's got to run from here to Alaska. He's got to run from here to China. He's got to get there. God, boom, he's everywhere. That's how big our God is. He's omnipotent, all-powerful. Satan is powerful, but he's not all powerful. Right. Jesus Christ is all powerful. Right. Matthew 28 says, All power is given to him. Yes, we got to declare it. You got to declare life is in his hands. No man shall pluck you out of my father's hand. Jesus, no man's going to pluck you out. Satan can't pluck you out. That's how big our God is. The demons of hell can't pluck you out. He got you in his hand. Isn't that wonderful? Show him how great he is. They should seek him. They should seek the Lord. I'm so proud of you being in the house of God today. So proud of God. Proud of you. You are seeking him. You're seeking him. And there's there's others that wish they could be in the house of God in churches across our land, and they they're stopped. They're, but they they're they're looking on the internet. They're looking on the internet. The next best thing would be in the house of God. They're looking for them. They're seeking them on their phones, on their computers. I, I admire that. The ones that are truly doing it. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about the ones eating popcorn, having a party, listening to half of the sermon online. Ain't that right? <laughs> Ain't that, am, I, am I telling the truth? Ain't that right? But people that just, can you imagine sitting in their living room, Bible open, Taking notes. Can you imagine saying amen? Can you imagine looking at it? That's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> he said he won't be able to do it. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> There's some out there. <laughs> There's some out there, friend. There's some out there. You mark it out. There are some out there. And pray for them. Isn't that right? But thank God and praise God that you are seeking after him. And this is what it says here. And uh, they may they may seek the Lord if happily they might feel feel after him, feel after him and find him. Though he be not far from every one of us, he's out there. There was a soul winner that was knocking on doors and getting the gospel out, and the man had a gun to his head, and he was about to pull the trigger. Thank God, a church member knocked on his door. He said, "What do I got to lose to find out who's knocking at my door?" Put the gun down. Make a long story short, the soul winner led him to Jesus. And he, he said, come here, I want to show you. You're not going to believe this. And do you know that that person was able to find God by somebody God said? God said. The man was looking for something, but, it, but blowing his head off is not the way. God showed him the right way. Amen. They'll find him. 
if we do our part, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The pastor told him, when you go soul winning, first thing you do, stop the first person you see as we're going soul winning, knock it on doors. If you see somebody on the way, stop your car, get out your car, talk to them. And that's what happened. It is said a man was about to jump in front of the trucks on the highway, but the soul winner got on his car and said, hey, guy stop. Made a long story short, he didn't run into the trucks and get killed. He listened to the Christian, the soul winner, and he prayed and asked Jesus to save him and got saved. God's able. God's able to reveal himself. People are thinking the answer is end their life. They're looking for God, friends. They're looking for God. They're looking for help. They don't know how to find him. Sometimes God will send you. He'll send me. Friend, how are they going to know if they, we don't tell them? Amen. Let me hear you say amen out there. Okay, we got to hurry, friend. We got to hurry. We got to hurry. We got to hurry. Now, look at your Bible at Acts chapter 17, if you will. Verse 28, for in him we what? We live and what? Move and have what? Our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, verse 29, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto what? Gold and what? Silver or what? Stone or what? Graven by art or what? Man's devices. That's why we don't pray through Mary. We don't pray to Mary through a stinking statue. We don't pray to some idol. Come on. We pray to the living God. Even though that we can't see him like we want to, one day we'll see him face to face, right? We're going to be able to hug him. We're going to be able to shake his hand and don't worry about the virus. Somebody say amen there. We will see him face to face. We will. Somehow God's going to work it out, friends. We will. Now, he did walk on this earth. He healed the blind, he healed the sick, he healed the deaf. And that right? Cast out demons. Right? You read your Bible, right? You know that, the miracles he did. One day we'll be able to see him face to face. You see? They're showing the people of the world through satellite TV. You can see it on your phone, many on your computers today. Things in Russia. We're all looking at the same thing. I don't know how it's going to be. But we'll be able to see him face to face, friends. And we worship him now, the invisible God, the invisible God, the invisible God. The choir sang about this invisible God. Specials, the preacher's preaching. Thank God you read about him. And, he, and he's real. He's real. Declare to the people about this God. Verse 30, and the time of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to us. So you declare to the world that this God, Jesus, says everyone must repent. Everyone must repent. He winked at it at one time. You know, God's a gracious and merciful God. He put up with things in the past. He's such a merciful God. Am I telling the truth? Isn't he wonderful? He's a graceful God, isn't he? But sometimes God gets fed up. And today we read, but now, but now commandeth all men what? God put up with ignorance for so long. Isn't that right, friends? We know better. Our country knows better. Shame on them. We ought to be disturbed what we see. Did you hear about the governor that says churches will not be essential, but abortion clinics to kill babies will be essential? Did you hear about that? God gets angry at stuff like that. He's fed up with it. Did you hear about it? Did you hear about the governor that wanted the marijuana plants going, the business going, but they wanted to shut the church down? God's fed up with this garbage. 
Did you hear about the governor that wanted to stop the pastors and preachers from preaching to their people in their cars, social distance in their parking lot with their own families? Wanted to shut it down? Wanted to put them in jail? But wanted the drive-by liquor stores to be open? God's mad at stuff like that. God is commanding people repent. Governor, repent. Mayor, repent. Trust Christ. Ask Christ to forgive you. Ask Christ to save you because there's a hell. Let me hear, let the church say amen there. Commanded all men everywhere to repent because he hath appointed a day in the which he will what? Judge the world in what? Righteousness by the man whom he hath what? Ordained. Where they have given assurance unto all men, they have raised him from the dead. And when they had heard the resurrection, heard of the resurrection of the dead, look at verse 32, Acts 17, verse 32. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some what? Some ma and others said, we will what? Hear thee again of this manner. So Paul departed. So Paul departed from among them. Albeit, what does it say? Certain men what? Certain men what? See that? These certain men claim on him and, and what? And believe. I want you to see that. The Bible says they believe. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that exciting? They believe. Among the which was uh, Dionysius, the Arab guy, and a woman named Damaris. Damaris and others with them. And I thank God for you that believe. And, and every time we go out soul winning, every time it doesn't fail. Thank you, soul winners. Somebody gets somebody saved. Usually every time. God bless you. God bless you. And friend, there will be all those, as you're declaring this great God, there'll be always some that will reject. But there'll be always someone that will believe. Isn't that right? I don't remember the last time, be, be honest with you, when we all went out soul winning. You know, I believe last week, um, we got word last week. That's right. Some got saved. Um, um, I, I know when we went out, my dear wife would tell you, I wanted somebody saved so bad. And went up there, last stop was at Kroger's. At Kroger's, uh, there, it was a, I'll never forget it. This young man. Seth, Kroger's uniform. My wife said he did it quickly. Yeah, I got to move quickly. And I'll tell you, before you know it, he was asking Jesus to save his soul from hell. Amen. He prayed, friend, as a teenager. He was so humble. He was just ready. God prepared him. He just needs somebody to get him to step out by faith and call on Jesus. God bless you, precious people. Don't, don't be discouraged. Everybody's not going to get saved. But I promise you, God will use you. Don't you give up. God, you pray. It's in you. You want to share with them that Jesus died, was buried, rose from the dead. Thank God for you, singers, you special groups. You declared our God today. Choir, you declared our God. How good he is. You show people. And by the way, thank God for you. You're in the house of God. Your friends ask you, your relatives, where do you go? I went to church. Well, I thought you couldn't have church. I thought the government does stop every church. Say, there's one church here he ain't stopped because we're going on for God. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's bow our heads in prayer, friend. Heads about, eyes are closed. Heads about, eyes are closed. Father, I thank you for these precious people. I pray, dear God, that you would help them. 